We're still back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Now we we'll move away from politics and all of the politicking and elections and talk about, you know, the environment. Uh, this morning we'll have a guest joining us, Falake uh, Sawala. Joining us this morning, she's of Green Recovery Nigeria, a coordinator, to speak about wetland as it's been celebrated today, the 2nd of um, February 2023. Uh, Falaka, it's good to have you join us this morning. In our Thank studios. you. Can you please bring us up to speed with what today is about? I mean, what's the importance of this day and how does that really affect us as humans, especially in Nigeria? Okay. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, I work with the Nigerian Conservation uh, Foundation. NCF is a premier NGO in Nigeria at the forefront of uh, promoting uh, environmental and conservation education in, in the country. So basically today is uh, International Wetland uh, Day and it's, uh, the commemoration is usually done on the 2nd of every February of every year. It started in 1997, uh, one of the outcomes of the Ramsar International Convention on Wetlands. So it's to raise awareness on the importance of wetlands to humanity and the reason why we should protect the wetlands. And that's the reason why we commemorate today. Um, I, I don't know, basically in the last 50 years, over 35% of the global wetlands has been lost due to human activities. Hence, the need to, on yearly basis, on this day, we need to come out and create awareness and let people know the importance of wetlands and why we need to, uh, you know, preserve the uh, wetlands. And in line with this year's um, uh, theme, which is the wetland restoration, it's all about now we've done a lot of harm in terms of degrading the wetlands. We need to now start promoting the restoration to get the wetlands back to uh, the forms where they will be continue to provide the eco ecosystem services that they provide. Right. Um, for those who are wondering, when we talk about wetlands, what do we mean? Okay, so basically wetlands, uh, it's a distinct e ecosystem uh, that's um, flooded or you know, saturated by water either seasonally or permanently. So uh, what comes easily to mind when you want to give example to people are uh, forest swamps or mangrove forest, like we have along the most uh, coastal areas in the country. And in, within Lagos, uh, the most prominent will be like the one around the National Theater. There is a wetland. You, if you notice around the National Theater in Orili Gomu, there is this uh, particular expanse of, <coughs> excuse me, expanse of land rich in uh, trees and biodiversity surrounding it is a typical example of what a wetland is. Mm -hmm. And wh why do we need to restore the wetland? Before we even get, get there, so what, are the, what is the important role uh, uh, wetlands play in, in, in our world, in our society? Okay, so I mentioned that they provide what we call ecosystem services. Okay. And then okay. the most prominent one will be like they, they provide uh, flood and uh, 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 flood control. Okay. It's okay. like a place, it's just like a storage where, where water otherwise that would be a nuisance to people is stored and supports uh, uh, fauna and flora that's uh, aquatic life. And also, wetlands also, um, they, they perform water purification function. Hmm. So, um, you know, we're in Nigeria now. I mean, I know it's a global event. Uh, but uh, let's talk about us. What, where can we, you know, spot out? You've just mentioned one in Lagos. Uh, there are other parts in Nigeria where we can find these wetlands and what are the challenges that, you know, these areas are faced with? Okay, so Nigeria is one of the internationally designated wetland countries. And then wetlands in Nigeria, you can easily find um, prominently uh, in the Niger Delta area along the Benue and Chad Basin as well as the whole length of Nigeria coastal uh, areas, including Lagos State. So we have what we call interna 11 international designated wetlands in Nigeria. Those are the ones that are internationally recognized. And this includes, uh, it, it includes the, what we call the Adeja Nguru wetlands. 
it also uh, um, it includes, uh, I'm trying to, to remember some of them. Uh, basically, most of them are, you can find in the, in the Niger data area. All okay, right. really, but, but, but let's talk about, you know, the challenges and the human activities that are affecting these wetlands in Niger. Okay, so it all depends on the parts of, of uh, like, for instance, the Adeja Nguru uh, wetland is situated uh, between um, Jigawa and Yobe State. And the main uh, human activity impacting it is overgrazing as well as deforestation. So this impacts uh, the wetland, and once you lay it bare, it's unable to provide the water retention, the water purification, the flood control that it does. And then in other areas, for instance, like Lagos, you have persistent uh, sand filling of wetlands for urban development. So these are the kind of activities that impact uh, wetlands and reduce the, 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 the amount of wetlands that we have and also definitely, and then one of the most important functions of uh, the wetlands I forgot to mention is what we call carbon sequestration. It acts as, a, just like forest, it acts as a, a carbon sink and helps to purify the hair. And this in, it's also uh, pro provides a, an important role in climate change control. So when we sand few wetlands, when we cut down the trees and wetlands, when we encroach on wetlands, it impacts uh, the ability of the wetlands to provide the ecosystem services that I previously listed to, to us as humans. But, but you know that in the cost of survival, for instance, uh, there are areas where you know, they are big on the production of rice. And we know that uh, rice and uh, wetlands work hand in hand. So swamp, if that's what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, these uh, swampy areas, uh, for instance, you have them in different parts of the country. I know Corsica State will have uh, swampy areas where people plant rice or grow rice. So how, how do we now separate you know, human survival and the protection of these wetlands? <laughs> because you have to survive. Okay, so uh, in, uh, as an organization uh, in NCF, our vision is to uh, promote in Nigeria where people prosper while living in harmony with nature. There's such concept as uh, sustainable agricultural practices. It doesn't mean that you're able to do your agricultural practices, but what we're saying is do it in a sustainable manner, do it in organic manner, don't overuse chemicals that impact the wetlands, and whatever you're taking from the environment, make sure you replenish it. When you cut down trees, in a part for you to do your, your, your farming, make sure you do another planting of trees in other parts to make, uh, you know, to compensate for the damage you're causing in that particular. So there's such things as sustainable agriculture that also minimizes the, the, you know, the quantity of land you need and also improves the yield of the farmers as well. Um, uh, whilst uh, you know, going through uh, you know, the conversations and you know, some of our programs uh, ahead of the, uh, 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 during the flooding, you know, recent flooding around the country, you know, we forget so quickly, Mercy. Uh, we moved on from flooding. Now it's Naira, uh, it's petrol scarcity, it's election. I think we're grappling with it. But, 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 but it's, it's, <laughs> we need to remember that uh, people died. People lost their homes, yes. property, livelihood. And, and we've not, we've got that has moved on, left everybody. But when the conversation on floods was on, I uh, had to go dig up the Lagos State Development Plans, the one that Fashola did, the one that Ambody did. Recently, uh, uh, someone came up with his, because um, uh, Ambody is unneeded to be upgraded, and it's going to be expiring soon. Um, one of the things I saw, I think, in the Fashola Lagos State Development Plan, what's called called Master Plan, which Tinbo has been campaigning with, is they said, they were going to try to uh, prevent flooding in Lagos State. Lagos is under threat of floods. You know, some communities are just by the water. And that they were going to set up a Lagos State wetlands uh, agency of some sort, or think tank, or body. Um, I want you to talk about how has government, uh, what can government do to make sure that these wetlands, because I haven't heard of this agency, you know, um, uh, is it important that they move to set up this a commission or agency about for wetlands restoration and protection 
to prevent flooding? And then what can government do to make sure that we do not have Lagos State flooded over in the next few years? Okay, so basically uh, the agency you, you mentioned has not come on board, definitely. But if it comes on board, it's going to like give uh, priority to wetland conservation, which presently is handled by, at national level by the Federal Ministry of Environment and also at uh, subnational levels by the state ministries or departments of environment as the case may be. So having such agency will definitely help. But the main uh, uh, way to do this is to promote protection of wetlands. All designated wetlands should be, they are already given protect, uh, uh, protected status, but the enforcement of the protection of these areas should not be breached. For instance, like I mentioned, the National Theater, in the last uh, couple of years, we've had to do photo exhibition, do a lot of awareness creation because of the renovation that is ongoing and which is already impacting the really? wetland. Really? So now we have to call the, the, those in charge of the restoration and get the guarantee from them that, you know, we, you're going to protect this wetland, wetland. So, but normally, statutorily, we shouldn't be canvassing for that. It should be part of the building regulations that these are designated wetlands. Don't sand fill, don't uh, build on them. And when you encroach on them, these are the penalties. So, so, so what about the other developments? So looking at that now, around uh, Lagos, where you have sand filling going on, even you know, public infrastructure projects, this, this is impacting negatively? Uh, in, not all the time, because... because uh, we, we see around the Oyanoro, for instance, yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah. Well, that part was, 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 yes, yeah. so that's part of, if, if, you, if you look at the statistics of the rate of uh, loss of the wetlands, it's as a result of incidents like, just like that. I was telling a lot of people that, you know, as far back, like as early as 2010-11, people used to paddle boat from Ifako to that Yanoguro. Now everything is sand fueled. And those are the wetlands that were providing ecosystem services to that particular area. Now, w where will the water, if there is water overflow from the lagoon, where does it go? It goes straight to people's houses. Whereas before the, uh, the construction, the, that particular expanse of land serves as a storage to take excess water during the rainy season from the lagoon. So uh, it's just a way that we need to enforce the environmental impact assessment which ensures that building and construction projects do not have adverse environmental impact on the general environment and specifically to, uh, you know, very sensitive ecosystems like the wetlands. So not to chew on that and I hope the authorities will take your advice uh, and do something with it. Looking forward to seeing if the legacy government will do what he had said it would do, which is serve this agency, you said. Um, but I would like to encourage you to Nigerian Conservation uh, Society Foundation. Foundation to keep up doing the, uh, the good work and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Well, that's the size of our conversation this morning and uh, we'll definitely let it go at this point in time. But we're speaking with an expert, if you like to say, uh, Falake Salawa. Salawo. Falake Salawo has been with us this morning. And uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be part of the conversation. Uh, that's if you missed out on any part of it. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a great morning. Coffee Bartels here. We're back tomorrow. Good morning.